speech. Evaluator number one is Mr. Jim Sims. Please help me welcome Jim Sims. Fantastic. Look who rode in to save the day. Only one call away. Anytime, any place, we just call Renato. I thought that we would have a little repartee with respect to Sue and Greg when he started talking about table topics and that you could talk about anything you darn well please. Not necessarily, depends on who the table topic master is. But I really enjoyed your speech because I myself about two months ago delivered a speech at Tampa Toastmasters entitled Why I Hate Back Pocket Speeches. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily that it was, that it was negative, but it, it was a wonderful lesson for people to learn, especially maybe type A people or those who have to have everything totally prepared in order to be successful, and you proved that we wouldn't need to do that. So you have a very engaging style, you connect with your audience right away, you did that with respect to questions, you gave us some really solid information, we can speak about anything, that uh, ne not necessarily having objectives or specific objectives for your speech. However, you didn't have a manual speech, and uh, it's a good example to use almost all the time, if you can, to have a manual speech. But I just happened to have a back pocket evaluation form, because I thought that might possibly be what we uh, saw tonight. So what did I think about as I saw you? You have a very relaxed style. And instead of giving a speech, I think it could be said that what you're doing is having a conversation with us. And I think that is almost sometimes an ultimate compliment for somebody who is a Toastmaster. You usually have a little bit more animation in your gestures, so I would suggest that maybe they may not be quite as subdued, although when you talked about up north, that was very, very vibrant uh, gestures. <laughs> I thought that your material, your content, your introduction, and your conclusion were all spot on. You were very encouraging in terms of your presentation. You gave specific examples of how you came up with your back pocket speech, which I, help, I think relates to the audience, especially if we haven't attempted to do that before. I thought your conclusion perhaps could have been a little bit more of a call to arms, maybe with an ending. How many of you now, after you heard Renato's speech, never have given a back pocket speech, feel more confident that you can do one going forward? Okay, how many? All right, excellent. So, you know, that kind of seal the deal type thing. What was the purpose of the speech? To encourage us to take the plunge into back pocket speeches. Now, as far as a few suggestions, try a longer pause. I know funny for me that there's people like Joe Jones say, what actually talks about never pauses. <laughs> but you can actually begin your speech with a little bit more of a pause. I think use more of the stage, you tended to be just in one area of the stage. And I know sometimes I do that and I think it's because I'm afraid of getting out of range of the camera. Right. Right. Sue can follow us, she's very, very good at that. Uh, Frank, not so much, you may want to stand in one spot if Frank is the cameraman. I would suggest, I would suggest having a speech title. And maybe even tell us some of the negatives or objections that you think we might have about not trying a back pocket speech. The, uh, the only thing I would uh, close with is audiences always enjoy stories, and I think that you proved to us that perfection is not a requirement to do a back pocket speech.